Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology as we continue to go through the Jane's reference material. Now today, we will be doing the F5E Tiger 2. F5E Tiger 2, title Northrop Tiger 2, USAF designations F5E and F5F, type single seat light tactical fighter. Program. Production ended 1987, but five F5E and three F5F assembled from spares for Singapore Air Force and delivered by July of 1989. Total of 3,805 of F5 T38 family produced. Include 617 F5As, 89 RF5As, 183 F5Bs, 792 F5Es, 12 RF5Es, 140 F5Fs, and 1,187 T38As. Canadair assembled 164 F5As and 76 F5Bs and Ds, um, the Ds being for Cas or by Casa of Spain, I guess. Trying to say there. 18 F5As, 18 RF5As, and 34 F5Bs. Uh, KA of South Korea produced 48 F5Es and 20 F5Fs. I think they typoed there. Um, is that supposed to be Focke-Wolf? F plus W? Switzerland, 84 F5Es and 6 F5Fs. AIDC, Taiwan. 242 F5Es and 66 F5Es. Separate are three prototypes, each of T38 and F20 Tiger Shark, a modified F5 prototype, tail number and 156F, and two F5E fuselages used for Grumman X29 forward sweep test aircraft. The F5E was selected in November of 1970 by the U.S. government as the winner of a competition to determine the single-seat international fighter aircraft, which was to succeed Northrop's F5A. The two-seat F5F was developed subsequently. The F5E design places particular emphasis on maneuverability by the incorporation of auto-maneuvering flaps. Full-span leading-edge flaps work in conjunction with conventional trailing-edge flaps and are operated automatically in response to airspeed and angle of attack. The flaps may also be pilot controlled to full down and full up positions. Wing loading is maintained at approximately the same value as the F5A as a result of an increase in wing area to 17.3 meters squared or 186 square feet. This is due principally to the widened fuselage which also increases wingspan. The tapered wing leading edge extension between the inboard leading edge and fuselage was refined to increase the wing area and maximize the lift coefficient of the wing. Design features, cantilever low wing monoplane, wing section NACA 65A004.8 modified, no dihedral, no incidence, sweep back at quarter cord 24 degrees. Tailplane incidence varied by hydraulic actuators of Northrop design for control of rudder and tailplanes. Or tailplane. Structure, multi-spar light alloy structure with heavy plate machine skins. The fuselage is a light alloy, semi monoc <laughs> I can't speak today. Basic structure with steel, magnesium, and titanium used in certain areas. Rear avionics bay and cockpit pressurized. Fail safe structure in pressurized sections. The tail unit is a cantilever all metal structure. Landing gear hydraulically retractable tricycle type. Main units retracting inward in the fuselage, no wheel forward. Oleo pneumatic shock absorbers of Northrop design in all units. Two position extending nose unit increases static angle of attack by 3 degrees 22 minutes to reduce takeoff distance and is shortened automatically during the retraction cycle. Gravity operated emergency extension. Power plant. Two General Electric J85 GE 21B turbojet engines, each rated at 22.24 kilonewtons or 5,000 pounds force. With afterburning, two independent fuel systems, one for each engine, fuel for starboard engine supplied from two rubber impregnated nylon fabric ladder cells comprising a center fuselage cell of 803 liters or 212 US gallons or 176 imperial gallons capacity in the rear fuselage cell of 640 liters or 169 US gallons or 140 imperial gallons capacity. Port engine supplied from a forward fuselage cell of 1,120 liters or 296 US gallons or 246 imperial gallon capacity. Uh, 
Oh, they just have one cell. Okay. Total internal fuel capacity, 2,563 liters or 677 U.S. gallons or 563 imperial gallons in F5E, 2,555 liters or 6,000, or sorry, 675 U.S. gallons or 562 imperial gallons in F5F. No fuel is carried in the wings. Accommodation pilot only in pressurized, heated, and air-conditioned cockpit on rocket-powered ejection seat. Upward opening canopy hinged at rear. Avionics and equipment, ANARC-164 UHF command radio, 7000 channel with 24 kHz spacing. Emerson Electric and APQ-159 lightweight micro-miniature pulse radar for the air-to-air -air search for target detection with range and angle tracking. Target information at a range of up to 20 nautical miles or 37 kilometers or 23 miles is displayed on a 0.13 meter or 5 inch direct view storage tube or DSVT and cockpit. ANASG 31 lead computing optical site, ANARA 50 UHF ADF, excuse me, ANAIC 25 intercom. ANAPX-101 IFF, ANARN-118 TACN, Attitude and Heading Reference System, Angle of Attack System, and Central Air Data Computer. Full Blind Flying Instrumentation. Optional avionics include the Lytton LN-33 Inertial Navigation System, ANARN-108 Instrument Landing System, CPU-129-A slash A Flight Director Computer, VHF, VOR, slash ILS with DME, LFADF, CRT with scan converter for radar or electro-optical weapon, specifically the AGM-65 Maverick, and ALE-40 countermeasures dispenser system, and ITEC, and ALR-46 digital or analog radar warning receiver. Armament, two AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles on wingtip launchers, two M-39 A2 20mm cannons and fuselage nose with 280 rounds per gun. Up to 3,175 kilograms or 7,000 pounds of mixed ordnance can be carried on one under fuselage and four underwing stations, including M129 leaflet bombs, Mark 84 2,000 pound bombs, Macha Drendel, uh, air to surface missiles. Is it? That, I guess it. Nah. It's kind of a. So the Durendal is, uh, if I remember correctly, is basically an anti runway bomb more so than a missile. As you launch it and it falls to earth, it, it's got a. It free falls. And then a parachute deploys to kind of stabilize the an angle for it. And then the parachute detaches and a rocket thruster fires so that way it penetrates deep into the concrete and then explodes to kind of make a crater so that way it's more difficult to repair and puts that runway out of commission longer. Um, air to surface missiles, LAU-68, uh, 2.75 inch rockets and LAU-3, 2.75 inch rockets with a capacity of 7 and 19, respectively. CBU-24, CBU-49, CBU-52 cluster bomb units, SUU bomb and rocket packs, SUU-25 flare dispensers, TDU-10 tow targets, DART, and RMU-10 real DART. Lead computing optical gun sight uses inputs from airborne radar for air-to-air -air missiles and cannon and provides a roll-stabilized, manually depressible reticule aiming reference for air-to-ground delivery. A snap shoot capability is included for attack on violently maneuver, maneuvering and fleeting targets. The gun sight incorporates also a detachable 16mm reticle camera with 15 meter or 50 foot film magazine. Optional ordnance capability includes the AGM-65 Maverick, centerline multiple ejector rack, and laser guided bombs. Dimensions external, wingspan 8.13 meters or 26 feet 8 inches, wingspan over missiles 8.53 meters or 27 feet and 11 and 7 eighths inches, wing aspect ratio 3.88, length overall including nose probe, F5E 14.45 meters or 47 feet and 4 and 3 quarters inches, height overall, F5E 4.07 meters or 13 feet 4 and a quarter inches, tailplane span, 4.31 meters or 14 feet, 1 and a half inches. Weights and loadings. Weight empty, F5E, 4,410 kilograms or 9,723 pounds. 
Max internal fuel weight F5E 1,996 kilograms or 4,400 pounds. Max internal fuel weight F5E F5F 2,415 kilograms or 5,324 pounds. Max takeoff weight F5E 11,214 kilograms or 24,722 pounds. Max landing weight F5E 11,406 kilograms or 25,147 pounds. Max zero fuel weight, F5E 7,953 kilograms or 17,534 pounds. Max wing loading, F5E 649.4 kilograms per meter squared or 133 pounds per square foot. Max power loading, F5E 251.6 kilograms per kilonewton or 2.5 pounds per pound thrust or force. Uh, length 15.65 meters, height 4.13 meters, wingspan 8.13 meters. Max takeoff weight 1,140.9 kilograms, uh, or is it 11,000, sorry, probably 11,409 kilograms. I think that's just some bad kerning there. <laughs> Max wing load, uh, kilograms per meter squared, 649.4. Max level speed in knots, 1,092. Service ceiling, 15,790 meters. Takeoff run of 701 meters and a landing run of 792 meters. Max rate of climb 10,516 meters per minute. And now we can see in the uh, kind of a unique design where it's pants upwards and then once you get to the cockpit, it pants back downwards. Kind of a interesting design. This is basically the uh, the MiG-21 of the. Uh, United States Air Force, although it mostly saw service with other countries because it was cheap and highly maneuverable, so good for short range dogfights. And I believe, I think they were still serving uh, with Switzerland, who only recently is starting to replace them. Um, obviously, I can't remember all the information, so I'll probably go see my F5 showcase video for better details, but. It's a nice little fighter. Kind of died off, though, after uh, Reagan made the F-16. Because originally the F-20 would have been the um, the successor to this. as kind of, like, designed as a cheap, lightweight fighter for export. But Reagan made uh, the F-16 available instead uh, to U.S. allies. And most of them preferred to get the more expensive and more capable F-16. And so the F-5 lineage died with the Tiger Shark, although it still lives on a little bit uh, in, with the T-38 Talon training units um, in the U.S. Air Force. But even those are being replaced now because I know the Air Force had a TXX tender uh, that I think has been officially won. I forgot by who, but someone won it. So they're going to be building those now and replacing the T-38s. And yes, for those uh, who might have been suspecting, this is also the infamous uh, MiG-28 from uh, Top Gun, so <laughs> uh, used as a stand-in because obviously in the 80s we didn't exactly have access to really good CG or Soviet aircraft, so so I think that will conclude today's episode, I hope you enjoyed it and tune in next time, and until then thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and we'll see you then <laughs>